than accepting the gold. Forever known as a champion, U.S. Olympians. For some, the dream of Olympic glory is within reach. Like in women's team gymnastics, rich in tradition, daring to dream. Take a look at 17-year-old Fernando Vargas. He won a gold at last year's sports festival. Now he steps up in weight class. Devaro Williamson is 27 years old. Still clinging to a dream, he slugged his way to a shot at the heavyweight gold. Meet the Stieglers, 11 and a half year old Tiffany and 13 year old Johnny. This dynamic duo from Manhattan Beach, California could be our team of the future in the pairs competition. Erin Sutton began skating when she was four and a half. Angela Nikodinoff when she was four. Sutton and Nikodinoff have visions of Olympic glory spinning in their eyes. The Olympic World and six U.S. National Figure Skating Championships were held. And while the Broadmoor Ice Rink was recently torn down, the memories of the skaters who performed here continue. They included Dick Button, Hayes Allen Jenkins, his brother David Jenkins, Peggy Fleming, and Dorothy Hamill. Now it's time to crown the ladies' gold medalist. And for that, let's go to Denver and our own ice dancing Olympic bronze medalist, Tracy Wilson, and men's Olympic gold medalist, Scott Hamilton. Win at the Olympic Festival, and good things are guaranteed to follow. Christy Yamaguchi did it in 1989. The Olympic silver medalist did it one year later. In 92, the festival was Nicole Bobeck's coming out party. A spunky 13-year-old joined the group in 93. And last year, it was Tara Lipinski. She was only 12. Today, we look to the future. We are at McNichols Arena in Denver, Colorado, where yesterday we showed you the ice dance competition. And later today, we'll feature the pairs. But right now, the final group of ladies is on the ice warming up. Hello, everybody. I'm Tracy Wilson, along with Scott Hamilton. And today, the ladies' champion will be decided. Now, you may not be familiar with many of these skaters, but remember their names, because I promise you, you'll be hearing a lot more from them in the future. These are the best in the country at the junior and the novice level. And Scott, this is a very important competition for these women. Well, for two young ladies in particular, this could be a breakthrough competition. In first place after the short program, Angela Nikodinoff, who ranked fifth at this year's Junior National Championships, easily beat the current reigning national champion, Sydney Bogle, who sits in fifth place. She landed a triple S jump for the very first time and is skating extremely well. In third place after the short program, Erin Sutton, who is the reigning national novice ladies champion. Well, this is her first junior competition, so any medal here would be greatly unexpected and would set her up in the judges' eyes and in the skating world as a force to be reckoned with. Highlights of those who have already skated today. This is Shelby Lyons. She is 14 years old, 4 feet 8 inches, and 70 pounds. Besides skating singles, where she placed third at the National Novice Championships, she and partner Brian Wells are currently the third ranked senior pairs team in the United States. Triple loop. She struggled with that jump a little bit in the short program, but at the beginning of this performance, she landed a triple flip jump for the first time in competition. A much more difficult jump. And she shows a great deal of promise. The tightness here in this triple sock out. Shelby's impressed a lot of people in the skating world. She fights for every landing. She can hold concentration throughout an entire performance. This is pretty important for somebody this age. Shelby moved to Colorado Springs a year ago to train in both pairs and singles. Her new singles coach is Kathy Casey, and in the last year, she's learned three new triple jumps. Another 
triple and triple toe loop. Doubled it. Very smart. She has trouble in triple toe loop every now and then, so for her to pull it out, it's very smart. thing in the world. You bought a little footwork. It happens to everybody. Double loop. Shelby's worked a lot on her speed, trying to get more speed in and out of jumps. Her last jump, very difficult. A double axle when you're extremely tired at the end of the program. No problem. She's such a joy to watch. And you'll be seeing a lot more of Shelby Lyons in the future. Good marks give Shelby Lyons a chance to move up. And then we saw 14-year-old Rhea B, second at Novice National. Her hero is Christy Yamaguchi, but her biggest fan is her mother, Erlinda. You see a skater so small, so tiny, you just worry about every step. You don't want them to fall and get hurt. You'll see your parents here. Yeah, that was good. That was, that was okay, okay. We hope it's a, a big jump coming up. Big jump, big jump. Yeah! Uh, no! <laughs> you live every step with your child. The favorite coming into this competition was national junior champion Sydney Vogel, who beat the current Olympic Festival champion Tara Lipinski last January in Providence, Rhode Island. But this was a disappointing event for the 16-year-old from Anchorage, Alaska. Triple flip here. Very nicely done. after the spin her right hip is padded it's always in the summer when you're learning new jumps you tend to fall you're landing on your right foot so you'll fall on your right side it gets very sore and very weak you have to pay a price triple lutz tilted in the air couldn't hang on to the landing i think i've given a body part for every triple jump i've learned ankles for toe loops hips for lutzes Sydney Vogel, so far a very disappointing competition. Triple toe. The marks for this performance have placed Sydney Vogel behind Shelby Lyons in the free skate. The final group continues its warm-up. The champion will come from here. And when we return, we'll see 15-year-old Brittany McCon, who stands in second place behind Angela Nikodinov. She's 15-year-old Brittany McCon, and she lit up McNichols Arena in the short program. She is currently sitting in second place, entering the long program. approach to figure skating is very similar to that of Olympic champion Dorothy Hamill. Skates with a lot of speed, solid athletic ability. Triple sack higher, one of her best jumps. Nicely done. Triple passes are her gauntlet. 
beautiful toe loop here. And a fall. Her sow cow is so solid, but she was having a little trouble with the triple toe loop this week in practice. program counts for two-thirds of the final score, just as it does at national, world, or Olympic competitions. Here at the junior level, the program is three and a half minutes in length. At the senior level, it's four minutes. A lot of the skaters in this event have up to triple lutz in difficulty in their program. Brittany's next jump is her most difficult, triple loop. She doubled it, little step out there. In order for her to be competitive on the senior level, she's gonna need to get a few more triple jumps. Nice save in the triple sack cow. popular piece of music it's from Schindler's List. It was also used by Katerina Witt and Paul Wiley. One thing we haven't mentioned is Denver, Colorado is famous for being one mile high in altitude. Skating isn't normally a summer sport, and altitude takes your stamina away. Last difficult jump, a double axle. Ah, she hangs on to that one. Altitude can be a factor at the end of these programs. Fifteen-year-old Brittany McCon in second place after the short program. Hoping that'll be enough to keep her on the podium. Look at the height, the speed, and the technique in these double axles. She'll easily get a triple. Very nice. Look at the second one, as good as the first. Up in the air, two and a half rotations. Nicely landed backwards. Very athletic. Skates with a lot of speed. Jump, she's been having trouble with triple toe. She reaches back, a little twisted in the air there, and just a little short on the landing. It looks like she was almost expecting to fall. Now let's take a look at the marks for Brittany McCon. First set of marks for technical merit. These marks are very good, 5.0. The difficulty of the program wasn't that great. Two triple south cows, a save in the second one is gutsy. I'm proud of her for doing that. This gets a lot of speed and athletic ability, and judges love speed. And the presentation marks for Brittany range from a 4.6 to a 5.0. These are similar to the first marks. Again, once she starts getting a higher level of triple jump, she'll be much more competitive on the senior level, but a great competition for her. Scott, those marks put her into first place for now, but still to come, 13-year-old Erin Sutton. Erin is the youngest skater in this event, and she's currently sitting in third place. She will be followed by the leader after the short program, 15-year-old Angela Nikodinov. Now on the ice, the youngest competitor in this event from Northville, Michigan, 13-year-old Erin Sutton. She is the novice champion of the United States, and she is finding herself in her first junior competition, sitting in third place after the short program. Aaron will be skating to music from Scheherazade and Samson and Delilah.
to see her artistically competitive with the junior ladies is wonderful because she does have good technique, good jumps. She opens with a triple sound count. A little forward tilt, but she covered it nicely. <laughs> Oksana Bayul. Aaron saw her do it on television and spent three weeks trying to get that. Her next jump, she landed beautifully in the short program, a triple toe loop. With the speed she carries, the air position. But this is her first try at a junior level competition. Many skaters are quite superstitious. They like to put their guards in one place for good luck. They carry around a teddy bear. Erin's only superstition is hours before she skates, she makes a list of all the jumps she will attempt. And then after she skates, she checks off all of those that she landed. Well, she's on her way to a lot of check marks today. Next check mark is a big one. It's her hardest jump in the program, and she was struggling a little bit in the warm up. She tends to tilt it backwards a little bit. Just didn't look like she had the strength to get it into the air. Again, we're at altitude. triples left in her program. Next one, triple toe. It's her best triple. Speed. And she guts us out of double toe. Loop. Very difficult combination there. Arm over the head. You can't use it to get into the air. Sagging a little bit, the shoulders coming up. She has a hard jump coming up, a triple sow cow. Very wisely doubled. She did enough to keep herself on the podium, I believe. And for the novice national champion to come in here and turn in a performance like that, it's more than she ever could have expected. 13-year-old Erin Sutton, the youngest competitor in this event. And there's her mom and dad, Catherine and Ken, from Northville, Michigan. And her mom's company designed and made Aaron's skating dress. When you're at this age and you're just learning the triple jumps and you're going in with all the concentration in the world, you need all the help you can get to get through this. Watch the reach here, the carriage across the ice. Nice landing there. Forward to Perfect presentation, and how does how does Dad feel about that? Well, let's look at Dad. He's like, okay, not bad. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. No, Dad, that was pretty spectacular. Triple loop. She struggled a little bit on the warm up. She just didn't look like she got up enough air right there. A little short, half a turn short in the landing, and a fall. But I'm not sure that fall will cost her very much, because what she did, she did very well. The judges are ready with their first set of marks for Aaron Sutton. Novice national champion getting five ones on the first mark. Easily beating the national junior champion. This is a nice coming out party for Aaron Sutton. And 
second set of marks for presentation, and these range from 4.8 to 5.2. She has a lot more maturity than a lot of people her age, and those marks will be good enough to put her in first place. Currently first place, skating to fantasy by On the ice now, 15-year-old Angela Nikodinov from San Pedro, California. This is the leader in the ladies' event. She had an outstanding short program. Angela is skating to fantasy by Tchaikovsky. She has been so calm and confident this entire competition of opening jump. Triple Lutz. Single. It looked like her toe just mushed. First time I've seen her miss the Triple Lutz since she's been here. She landed for the first time in her life in competition in the short program. Triple's important. Similar in takeoff to Triple Lutz. Vaults off the right foot. She needs to get a clean toe on the ice this time. Oh, a little forward. A very costly fall. Double axle. As she said, we've been watching Angela skate for a couple of days now, and she's looked so solid in practice. She hasn't missed a thing. How hard is it to regroup when you open with a triple lutz and slip, your, slip with your toe pick? Well, at this age, they don't really have the experience to be able to sit back and say, well, I've been through this before, and I can recover. They're going to have to reinvent their attitude towards this competition as they go along. It's so difficult on any level to get over a mistake. Nice double axle, double toe loop combination there. It seems like she's regrouping. double instead of a triple. It looked like she just rushed her timing a little bit. Triple sack cow, she needs this. She slipped off the edge there too. It just looks like she's not keeping her concentration. Her upper body pre-rotated her lower body. You need to be perfectly lined up to do anything. She's been so solid all week, and for her to turn in this kind of performance goes against anything I would have predicted. Angela Nikodinov has great technique. Disappointing performance, but this is not the last of her by any stretch of the imagination. 15-year-old Angela Nikodinov, and that was her first performance of that brand new program. And each time out, it's going to get better and better as her confidence builds. Then look at the triple X. Now watch her right foot. It reaches back here, and it looked like it just mushed into the ice. Normally, it just gives you a nice pop into the ice, but she'll kick there, and it just looks like it just gave away. That's just a bad stroke of luck. Triple flip, it looked like she planted her toe very nicely, but a little bit forward here, and she just stayed forward. Couldn't recover. Those are both of those jumps she's landed very well every day in practice. Just bad luck. And now the first set of marks for Angela Nikodinov. Technical merit. Four, five, four, eight. All those would have been in the, in the low mid fives. 
again, a lot of talent, a lot of abil ability, strong technique, just an unfortunate set of circumstances that just kept building on itself. And the second set of marks for presentation. And these aren't these aren't too bad. Uh, John Nix would like her to be more interested in the choreography of her program and artistic ability, but again, uh, just a very disappointing performance for Angela. Again, not characteristic of anything that she's done since she's been here. Those marks drop Angela Nikodinov down to fifth place, and so the champion is the youngest in the event. Erin Sutton wins her fifth straight competition, but I imagine this is the biggest win of them all. She joins a list that includes Yamaguchi, Kerrigan, Bobek, and Kwan, all Olympic Festival champions. Brittany McConn is second, Amy Dontremont takes third, and young Shelby Lyons moves up to fourth place. Junior champion Sydney Vogel finishes sixth in the field of eight skaters. Rhea C is in seventh. I'm Tracy Wilson, along with Scott Hamilton in Denver. It was mother, Glenda, who was suffering from muscular dystrophy. Next, more gold medal boxing. And there's a sign to remind you that this is a mile high, too. We're getting ready for the pairs free skate, and this is the event that has stolen the show, all because of these two skaters, 11-year-old Tiffany Stiegler and her 13-year-old brother, Johnny. They're only in third place going into the free skate, but they brought the house down with their short program. We have a microphone on their coach, Peter Opegard, as you watch them warm up. You know what, let's do that one more time, Johnny. You, you were in the way for that one, right? Just move out of the way and bring it straight through, okay? She couldn't get by you, right? You understand, right? Okay, one more time on that. To your stop, Tiffany, okay? You can see their relationship. They've been working together for six years. He treats them as adults. He's gotten great results out of them. Johnny was in the way on the first throw. Let's see if he gets out of the way for this one. Throw double sow cow. Very nice. They are beautifully coached. Okay. You guys are looking good. We're done with the warm-up. You made it. Fine. You all right now? We can take a breath, okay? The Stieglers will get a chance to catch their breath. They skate third in the final group. The first team is the first place team of Nicole Perry and Paul Dulabon. This is the free skate, which counts two-thirds of the final score toward the gold medal. Nicole Perry is 17 years old from Redwood City, California. Paul Dulabon is 24 from Germantown, Maryland. They will skate to music from Gone with the Wind. Their opening move, helicopter lift, flip down. Watch the air position and the exit. Their next element, very difficult, side by side, double axles and double flips. She singled hers. you can luck out, a judge will be watching one member of the team or the other. Sometimes they don't notice any lack of unison. Double twist here. Throw and throw, triple sow cow. Good speed. Big triple sow. It looked like she might have had a little too much height, a little too much distance, and couldn't control the landing.
since May of 1994. They finished third in the nation in juniors this year. First place after the short program, but they've opened the door a little bit here for the other teams. competing in this competition. They call themselves the Dueling Doolabons. They say the rivalry is very friendly, but it must be difficult for mom and dad. Another look at that throw triple sow cow. It really looked nice on the takeoff. Good straight air position, height, coverage of ice. Look at that. Really nice. A little bit behind it. Ugh. You hate to see anybody twist the knee like that on the landing, but she got up fine and no problem. The last lift in the program here, the Lido lift, she'll go upside down. This is when you're the most tired in the program. So much of this pair skating is done off ice, just lifting, 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 so you have the strength at the end of the program to be able to do these maneuvers. I, I just ripped it off. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> I Paul there talking about the adjustment he made to his costume. Couldn't breathe, so he just undid his bow tie. And here's their first set of marks. Technical mirror, ranging from 4.7 to 5.1. Highest marks we've seen so far. You just hate to see somebody miss a triple sow cow that nice. It was just really big, straight. Yeah, no, I saw. And now the marks for presentation for Nicole Perry and Paul Dulabon. Hey everybody. <laughs> These are very good as well. In this short program, the judges like what they did, and they like what they did in the long program as well. And we'll see Paul's brother next, and then Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler. <laughs> First place, and now the other half of the dueling Dulabons take the ice. Philip Dulabon, 21 years old, and his partner Ann McWilliams, she's 18. They train in Newark, Delaware, and they're in fourth place entering the long program. They are skating to music from the seasons.
double loop jump. The height. Control the landing, very nice. They were both single skaters until last summer, and then they started doing pairs. They felt they had gone as far as they could as single skaters. Because of that background, you see they're very strong individual skaters and jumpers. But with their lack of pair experience, they still have to work on basic pair elements. They have to fine tune them. side double axles she couldn't hang on to her landing to think that they were just a year ago single skaters it's amazing to see how far they've come as pair skaters if you think of unison and rapport it's all a very time-consuming process it takes years to know instinctively what your partner's about to do to develop that timing within the team. It says you are at 5,280 feet. And to get to the end of one of these programs when you're lifting, jumping, stroking, spinning, it's very difficult, especially in July. Just finishing their first year as a team. Look at the throw double axle. He'll throw her into the air forward, take off two and a half revolutions. Nice and straight here. A little two foot there. Very safe. If you're having trouble with it in the warm up, you should just do whatever you can to get through it in the performance. Side by side double axles, you'll see here, up in the air. She's just a little bit short there, another two foot, and just can't pull off the landing. A lot of times when you're doing throw double axles, your single double axle can, the timing can get messed up a little bit. You've just got to find a way to get through them. I was like, shit. Ann wow. McWilliams and Philip Dulabon in fourth place after the short program, hoping that these marks will take them to the podium for a set for technical merit. These aren't too bad. When you look back on that program, they didn't have a whole lot of problem with any of the pair elements. 
But it's the individual elements that cost them. Coming right off the single skating, you have to wonder how. <laughs> but I guess you can only work so much on one thing without letting something else suffer. And second set of marks for presentation, and these range from 4.8 to a 5.2. And these are very good marks as well. Very, very close to his brother, <laughs> his brother's team's marks. They should be very happy with him. Well, he was close to his brother, but not ahead. The team of Nicole Perry and Paul Dulabon remains in first place. Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler will be next to skate. She is entering sixth grade, and he is entering the eighth. And they are in third place at the U.S. Olympic Festival. Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler, who started skating almost before they could walk. Very first important step is the first one. Curtsy, you got to learn how to do that. <laughs> Costuming is also very important in building a champion. Diet and performance intensity. Since I was older than um, Tiffany, she said, well, why don't we just try to put you guys together? Because I was a head taller when we, about a head taller when we started. So we went and started doing pairs together and it worked out. And these are the moments they'll always remember. Okay, waiting, waiting, getting closer, almost there. And yes, the pull through. A little older here, this is Sun Valley outside. The first throw they ever did, and to see now how they've developed over the years. And they're only going to get better. Now, how do you prepare for a program? Let's ask Tiffany. Johnny. I'm not going to say. You tell me. No. You tell me? Well, she'll go out to me and, like, try to kiss me or do something like dance to someone's music in front of everybody just to embarrass me or try to make me laugh or just doing stuff. She really has a lot of energy and she's real hyper always. Scott, earlier Tiffany was seen hanging upside down by her knees, swinging back and forth on one of the costume racks. She uh, did a perfect dismount though. And they're ready now for their long program. Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler. They're from Manhattan Beach, California. There's their coach and choreographer, Peter Opegard, and he choreographed this program to Swan Lake. Throughout the program, you'll hear Scott's voice, and you'll also hear Peter Opegard's voice. We have him mic'd. What set them apart in the short program and in this long program is performance, intensity, dramatics, and they really sell to the crowd. Their opening lift is sideways star. Good. Move a double twist. double loop. Watch how far she goes. Right there. <laughs> She's Oksana Bayul performed the Swan Lake and tried to incorporate as many of those moves as she possibly could.
had never stayed on their own at a competition before, but when they came to this event, they were put with the other athletes in the dorms. They stayed there for a couple of nights, and then they thought, no, we're moving in with Mom, so they went to her hotel room. Tonight, though, they want to be back in the dorms because they want to enjoy the festivities. Speed, come on. knows they're seeing something extremely special here. Come on, Tiffany. Throw double sow? Yeah. in this program that they could. see something so truly special you just want to keep track of it and watch it develop they are absolutely spectacular that's okay you can be perfect at nationals again you have to be strong both the man and the woman look at this air position the extension the focus on the crowd he keeps his feet moving Keeps the lift going. Side by side axles here. Watch axle. They both land. Keeping good speed. And they step forward. Right into double sow cows. And there's Dad John. Yeah, you did it. Oh, there's your mom and dad. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> That's like me, that's what I would do. Remember, they're in third place after the short. If they can win this, they win it all. First set of marks for technical merit, ranging from 4.5 to 5.0. Your technical was better than that. I thought you did some strong technical moves today. Strong throws. What do you think, Tiff? What do you think? Good. I don't care. I think we could have done a clean program, but... It's okay. Yeah, it's not perfect, you know? Look, but you know what? You had a five hour in technical. In technical. Almost five hours. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. And now the yeah. second set of marks for presentation of these two the way up. As I said, the judges are an extension of the audience. Five threes for a team this young. Watch out. They're only going to get stronger and better. That puts them into second place at this point behind Nicole Perry and Paul Dulabon with one team yet to skate and that team is 21 year old melanie lambert and 20 year old fred palisac now they are in second place entering the long program if they win this long program they will win it all they will be skating to the music from romeo and juliet place to skate in competition. You're fighting for a gold medal. You're the 
last pair team on the ice, and you skated after a full standing ovation for Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler. twist. Very nice double twist. Side by side jumps. Double axe, so she lands hers. He had a little trouble with his. started skating when they were only two years old, but they didn't start skating together until just 10 months ago. And in February at the national championships, they placed fourth in juniors. Quite an achievement. double axle. So you tipped it outside. Tilt it outside. You're landing in your right foot. You tilt it left. You can't save it when it's tilted to the left. Side double flips, the double toe loop. The maturity of artistry could help them here. Very safe, conservative routine by Melanie and Fred. She is from Medfield, Massachusetts. He is from Cleveland, Ohio. 21-year-old Melanie Lambert and 20-year-old Fred Palisak. It's amazing how well they work off each other, only being together 10 months. Watch this double twist. There's plenty of room here for a triple. That will come. He lifts her up in the air. One, two, plenty of room for a triple there. Look at the throw double axle. Now she'll be tipped. You're, she's rotating over her right side there, but she's tipped outside, and you can't land on your right foot when you're tipped out to the left. It's almost impossible to save. You have to be extremely lucky, and she just couldn't pull it off. Okay. 
And now the first set of marks for Melanie Lambert and Fred Palisak. These are for technical merit, and they range from 4.7 to 5.0. Again, a very difficult place to skate after the Stieglers. But these two showed a lot of maturity. They had a good rapport with one another. They've only been together 10 months, so they'll be improving each time out. And here's the second set of marks. These are for presentation. They range from 4.7 to 5.0, and those were not good enough to beat the Stieglers. Tiffany and Johnny backstage showing to Mom and Dad, hey, we're second. No, we're third. Well, close. Scott's with the winners backstage. I guess the T-shirt says it all. Gotcha, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Gold medal at the Olympic Festival. Congratulations. Yeah, it was... Thank you. <laughs> it's exciting. And uh, very exciting. It's, it's it's just nice that we did a good job. Very nice. unexpected too. Yeah. What were you expecting to come away with here? I, we hoped to be on the podium, but we didn't expect first. I mean. Third or second. Yeah. It's, you never really expect to go into a competition winning, just trying to do your best and. And I guess, well, we didn't do our best, but it was good enough, I good guess. Good enough, so, yeah. yeah. it was good enough. Good enough for gold. Nicole Perry and Paul Dulabon take it. Tiffany and Johnny Stiegler get silver, and Scott Hamilton is with them. Well, uh, here we are again. A great short program and a fantastic long program. What a thrill, huh? Yeah. This is exciting because, we, we, you know, we, as I said before in other interviews, we came here, you know, just hoping that to make everybody think we belong out there since it's our first junior competition. And we came back with a lot more than we thought we were going to, so we're real excited. Yeah. Tiffany, what were you expecting to come away from this competition with? Well, I just came here, like, trying to show the judges that, like, we're junior now and we're ready, but <laughs> I didn't expect this. It was a surprising Olympic festival, and these are the champions of the four figure skating disciplines. We congratulate them all. For Scott Hamilton, I'm Tracy Wilson at McNichols Arena in Denver.